Hi folks, Frank the Pest Geek here, host of the Pest Geek podcast and owner of Nature Pest, a holistic pest management firm that focuses on organic compliant uh, facilities, integrated pest management, I know that's a mouthful, for residential and commercial environments. Basically, what do we do? We take the same principles that are done in hospitals, hotels, laboratories, uh, basically high level facilities and we bring that to the home or business. This is what we specialize in. And what we're gonna be discussing is holistic pest control. The five most important things that people need to understand in order to get this kind of service to be effective for them. And we're gonna go ahead and get into that right now. All right, so now we're gonna get into identification. And this is the most difficult part for any non-professional, including professionals, that either never come across that pest, have never taken an entomology course, haven't identified pests, or simply have never looked at the uh, Truman's Guide or uh, the Malice Guide or any of the entomological information available from their state, they've been taught to spray and they've never taught to identify. And then when I get a call from a client, 99 out of 100 times, they say, I know what I've got. I Googled it. And 99.9% .9 of the time I'll go there and they're completely wrong because they do not understand how to do pest identification because it is very difficult. Most of the time when I do pest identification on something I've never seen before, it can take me two, three, four hours of sitting there under a microscope, looking at an insect, tearing it apart limb by limb, and looking at the antenna and counting how many nodes are in that antenna. The design of those nodes, is it a club? You know, doesn't it not have a club? I look at the, the head. I look at the mandibles. I look at the hairs on the body. I look at the gaster. I look at the thorax. I look at the uh, petioles between the gaster and the thorax and I compare this and I take notes of all this and then I'm going online on the entomological data and seeing what do, do I identify this with based on the entomological data that I have from identification. Somebody sends me a picture like this and can you tell me what this is? I found it in my house. Well, it's a bad picture. I can tell you that. Other than that, I can't tell you what that is. It's dark, it's not close enough, it's not clear. If you're going to take a picture to send to a pest control professional or to a laboratory or to the entomology center or to the extension service, you need a very clear and good picture. This is the microscope I use most of the time for identification. It's a Celestron microscope, it's a USB, it hooks up to my computer, I can pretty much enlarge any insect, take a look at it, dissect it visually, and ID it. Most of the insects like this that I got from the field, those are forehead flies. And customers said they had fruit flies. Whenever a customer tells me they have fruit flies, I got to scratch my head and going, do you have any fruit? Well, no. Then probably you don't have fruit flies. You've got forehead flies. These are known as humpback flies. And... A tool like this that you can attach, now you got to order one and you got to have one, but they're extremely helpful. Installing it to your smartphone, clipping it on, and taking a close-up macro picture. This is a macro lens. This was given to me at uh, Pest Management University um, when I took my master's course. You know, they were giving those out for free. Um, you know, you can order them online at um, you know, Amazon or anywhere. And you can use it, even if you're a, a professional, hook it up to your camera. You can take a lot of cool, neat pictures when you're in the field. Uh, does very well for macro photography uh, for the phone. A baggie. Just a simple baggie. Professionals, carry these baggies with you. Owners, just, you know, put a couple of these and hand them to a pest control professional. Have them take it back to their entomologist or their certified operator. Have them identify it, what it is. You gotta make sure sometimes you have the whole insect. 
a lot of the time what people will say is, well, where's the insect? I need a picture of it. Well, here's the picture. And it's a bad picture. What did you do with the insect? Well, I cleaned it up and threw it out. It doesn't help if you throw it out. Collect it, put it in a baggie. And then that way when I go over or I send a technician over, he can bring that back to me and I can identify it under a microscope. A lot of the time from a picture, we cannot do it. Let me show you how hard this is. These are termites that we collected this week on site. And this is a little vial that I carry with alcohol, rubbing alcohol. And the best thing to do is this better than a baggie because it won't get dehydrated or get preserved. Okay. When you put it in a baggie and it gets dehydrated and it spends all day in the truck, it could dehydrate and it could shrivel. And it sometimes it's very difficult to tell what the insect is um, because it shriveled up. So it loses a lot of its, its characteristics. Here is, again, that bad picture that was sent to me, and I can't identify what that is. Here is on a monitor. This is why we use monitors in the home. We had put this board out, and we couldn't figure out what the lady was calling about that she was seeing flying around. So we went out and we put monitors, and I told the, the, the tech, when you're there, see if you can, you know, in the air swipe, if you see a couple of them, and try to glue them onto the board and bring the board back. Well, it turns out that those aren't flies. Those are crazy ant swarmers because she was complaining that they were only in her bedroom. Her bedroom, they were getting in through the window because she had bushes outside and they were swarming, you know, they were on the bushes and they were coming in. They weren't in the bathroom. This would have been a filth fly. We would have had people complain about it in the bathroom or the kitchen where there's water because they deposit filth flies will deposit their eggs and they want to be near water. Well, these guys were in the bedroom. So I said, it can't be a fly. It's got to be something else. Sure enough, tech brought it in. We were able to ID it and then say, okay, you're going to have to wait till the swarm dies out. We're going to install these lamps and these lamps will help catch them at night because they're attracted to the UV light and bring down that population for you. No amount of chemical was ever going to prevent or solve this problem. Here what we see is what is known as a carpenter ant. The one on the right, there's two on the right, or on the left, and there's two there, and those are two different types of carpenter ant swarmers. The one on the left, that is a uh, tortuganus carpenter ant, both in Florida, and the one on the right is a carpenter ant alate. People think they got termites in their cars. We got termites. They're swarming. Well, it's not termite swarming season. Let's go look at it and see what you got. You got carpenter ants. Chances are you got a carpenter ant nest in the house or there's a satellite nest in the house. The one on the right is a bull ant. It is a carpenter ant. It is the Florida carpenter ant, not the alate. Looks completely different than the alate. That thing looks built. It looks buff. And... Trying to identify, a lot of the times, the, the carpenter ant is going to get mis, um, depending on the species, is going to get misidentified. Here's a glue board with forehead flies on it. That is an actual forehead fly. The customer was saying they got fruit flies. Usually, if there's no fruit, there's no fruit flies. You bring it in when you buy fruit, you get rid of the fruit. Usually the fruit fly will die on its own. But when they're persistent, we caught these on a lamp that we put in the kitchen and they were forehead flies. These are known as humpback flies. How do we know? We look under a microscope and that humpback is there. That's a humpback fly. Here is another insect that the customer thought and the technician thought they had a flying ant. Well, it turns out that is a parasitic wasp, which was very rare. The reason that one was there is because that property, that apartment, was about less than a mile from the world-famous Hialeah racetrack where they have horses. And they release these flies, and these flies are natural around dung because they will control the house flies and the house fly larvae on the dung. And this is why they had them in their house. Trying to identify this little insect, look at the size of that. 
That is a dime and that is the date on a dime. Go look at a date on a dime and see how small that is to try to identify. It was confused as an ant. Thought it was some type of um, little crazy ant or something because you saw how that crazy ant can look alike. So identification is really a lot tougher than most people think. Here is Australian cockroach nymphs. That's an Australian cockroach, probably in its last instar on the left. And those are all the nymphs that we found in the house when we did the service. The house was closed for about three months. They went on vacation and they found a slew of cockroaches. How did they get in? Through the sewer system. All the traps dried out and the roaches are in the sewer system, moved in. The one on the right is a German cockroach with instars, nymphs, in different instars, different growth stages. You can see how difficult that is for an untrained eye to know the difference between that little one on the right, on the right picture, and the little one on the left picture. They look identical. People say, well, I got little roaches. Well, I got them in all sizes. When somebody tells me they got them in all sizes, guess what? They usually have either American cockroach, they'll have, depending on a smoky brown cockroach, or they'll have an Australian cockroach. How do you know it's Australian and not American? Because the yellow, and they look like these bat eyes in the back of that, the thorax or the prothorax, which is like the back of the head. The head is actually underneath there on the tip. That's not the head, though. That's the thorax. It's a different part of the body. So we got plenty of resources for you to learn about how to actually control these problems. If you go to naturepest.com, I've got a DIY podcast. We've got about 20 episodes on that coming out. And we got more episodes on the way. And we also have a DIY blog that shows you how to actually solve specific problems. Here we can't get, why didn't you recommend any chemicals? Because I carry 30 something chemicals on the truck, products to handle each individual problem. I mean, one problem alone could use up three different chemicals, four chemicals. For instance, dealing with drain flies, you got to use DSV, Nibor D, and foam. And then outside, if you've got them, you got to spray it with an IGR, maybe a natural essential oil to control it outside. And then come back the following week and repeat it all over again for two to three weeks. So getting into specific pest control problems is going to be very difficult unless we create a blog. We also have the... Uh, Pest Geek Podcast, which this is an industry podcast for growing and operating a pest control business. This is not for the residents, although I have many, many technical and tactical podcasts, which we get into depth, real depth on solving difficult problems and solving routine issues that people miss on how to solve it. So if you got the patience and you want to dig through there and you want to get a real, if you're a building manager that says, man, I really got to know this stuff because I'm dealing with so many issues here and the pest control company isn't solving it and I need to know why. This is how you know why. Do you become a professional? There's also on Nature Pest on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. That YouTube channel has hundreds of videos on actual how to solve most German roach problems, American roach problems, drain fly problems, ant problems. Very, 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 very specific stuff in there. And there's the Pest Geek podcast on YouTube that also has many videos. But again, this is more focused on business development, business growth, and operating a pest control business. So if you're a professional, um, I've got a couple hundred videos in there too. And finally, we're coming up with the Pest Geek Academy where we have certified for continuing education credit courses that we're going to be offering and it's getting populated. Uh, we've got about four or five courses that we want to put in there. And these courses are going to be anywhere between one entire, like the CEU courses are two hours each. So one hour and one hour on something different, you get two CEU hours. The other courses are uh, a new technician training course that has everything a technician needs to know about law, about IPM, about HCS, uh, labels, um, SDSs and all of these legal things that a technician needs to know before he starts to work. And then we're going to have actual training courses on how to deal 
with roach problems and ant problems and all kinds of different um, situations. These are real world training situations that we're trying to get into uh, with a lot of this. So there you go. Those are all the resources. And we hope that this has been helpful to you to help you understand how to start tackling and whether you have a competent pest control technician or a pest control company. Uh, if you have and you're looking for a holistic company, we're only in Miami-Dade, Broward, uh, and we're going to be Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach soon. Um, so mostly South Florida. We're planning to go into Naples and the Keys, but we're only dealing with South Florida. If you need a technician, uh, a, a good IPM company that does holistic pest management, that does eco-friendly pest control, Hey, feel free to drop us a message on Messenger. It's the best way through through Facebook, either on Pest Geek Podcast or on Nature Pest because I get those messages no matter what system I'm on. I'm on five different phones sometimes. I'm on the computer. I'm on the road. Um, I can always get a message there. Um, you can, you know, trying to call us is going to be very difficult because we get so many calls and trying to call everybody back that needs help. But Messenger is the best way. Uh, if you're needing, also, if you go on my, you follow me, Franklin Hernandez, uh, look up Franklin Hernandez Pest Control. Hey, I got hundreds of professionals, follow, thousands. I mean, we got about 3,000 professionals that follow me on there. You, you feel free to drop a question in there and say, hey, I got this problem. I got this insect. Can somebody help me with this? We'd be more than glad to put all of our network at your disposal to help you and help pest control companies that maybe you can't solve the problem. Maybe you need a professional. We can get you a competent person uh, on there that can help you. Hey, I hope this beneficial has been helpful. This is Frank the Pest Geek wishing you a pestacular day.